Okay, um, I've been requested to do some more initial value problems. They seem to be pretty popular on my channel, which, you know, really isn't saying much. Um, but so I'm going to give the people what they want. Okay, so here, here we got, here's an initial value problem. And basically what it's done, it's given us, it's given us a function, but it didn't really give it to us. So here, here you got y of x, okay, over here. Um, but they didn't really, they didn't give us what the function is in terms of, you know, variables and all that stuff. They gave us the function evaluated at this case, negative one, okay? And basically if we plug negative one in here, we get zero, okay? Um, the other piece of information that we have right here is the actual derivative of y of x, okay? So whatever y of x is, this is its derivative, okay? Now we've been, now we've done antiderivatives already and we know that basically it's a good way to uh, kind of recover a function from its derivative, you know? So say I, say I know, say I know uh, the velocity of a uh, potato that I just launched out of a potato gun. Well, if I know that, then I can find out its position, okay? Basically it's kind of, a, a real world example of why you might want to um, do this, you know, because, you know, um, so let's just go ahead and s start off right here. Um, now, just recall that if I take the, if I integrate this thing, I'm going to end up with kind of, not really the original function, but I'm going to end up with what, um, I'm going to end up with something, I'll just, let me just do it, okay? Um, so this is going to be, what is going to be, a 9x to the third over 3 minus 4x to the second over 2 plus 5x plus c, okay? Um, and yeah, we could do some simplification right here, no problem. But the first thing to notice is this isn't, you know, to be picky, this isn't the actual function. It's just the antiderivative, okay? Um, this C could be 5, 15, 20, 57 billion, doesn't matter. Its derivative would still look exactly like this. But we, we, we're interested in this actual, uh, um, the real function that it came from. And notice that they, did, they, they gave us uh, this in, piece of information right here, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of transfer this down here, this Y of negative 1 being equal to 0. That's kind of sloppy, but just trust me. Now I'm going to simplify this uh, antiderivative a little bit. So we got what three x to the third minus what two plus c. Okay, so basically this guy right here um, is kind of resembles our original function. So all we got to do is basically set this whole thing to zero and evaluate it at negative one. So let's just go ahead and do that. Plus C, okay. Uh, right off the bat, we uh, we know that you know uh, negative one to the third. That's still negative three. So this is uh, going to be negative three. Um, negative one squared is positive one, so that's negative two. Negative five plus C. So it looks like zero is equal to what? Negative ten plus C. So that's actually going to make c equal to 10, okay? So let's go back up here, and here's my general antiderivative. Actually, here, here's a better one that we simplified. So we can take this piece of information. We can go ahead and say now that y of x, okay, is equal to 3x to the third minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 10, okay? So, just to test our little theory, let's just go ahead and look for y prime, the derivative. So that's gonna be what, 9x squared minus 4x plus five, derivative of a constant is zero. So, and there's our original guy right there. So that's basically an initial value problem, okay? Um, just walk, walking back through it again, we started out, um, with basically not really the function as we know it, but they just kind of gave us they kind of gave us what the value of the function is at negative one in this case. Okay, uh, they gave us derivative, no problem. We integrate it, we get the function plus c, 
okay, being equal to zero, since the function plus c is equal to zero, and they give us our x, we can go ahead and just basically solve for c. So uh, we went ahead and did that. And like I said, um, our, our, we'll do some word problems um, probably coming up pretty quick here, but you know, you know, if, if you if you knew if you knew like how fast your car accelerated and you wanted to find out its velocity, then you know this would be a good way to go about doing it. So we got to kind of start out with this type of stuff, and then we'll work our way to some uh, some more practical problems, right? So stay tuned. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.